Hey guys, Dr. Ricky here. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about everything health and beauty. Today I'm diving into a topic that a lot of you have asked me about, and that is when is it weight loss versus plastic surgery? Which one is best for you? Stick around because I'm going to break down each option, look at the pros and the cons, and help you decide what's right for your unique situation. Before I start, I want to talk about something that I think is very, very important. I get comments on social media all the time that relate to I would never do that. Why can't people just love themselves? You don't need plastic surgery. Just love yourself the way you were made. Now, I can't tell you how much those comments irritate me because just because someone wants to make a physical change that involves surgery, it doesn't mean that they don't love themselves or appreciate themselves or that they haven't done everything they could possibly do outside of surgery to obtain the result that they're looking for. Listen, why do people get tattoos or wear makeup? Because they want to look different or that specific thing makes them feel a certain way that they otherwise wouldn't be able to achieve without it. Plastic surgery is the same way. Now, of course, there are people, as we see on social media, who completely overdo plastic surgery. There are plastic surgeons who are unethical that will do any and everything to anyone as long as they pay them money. That is not what I stand for and that is not what most of my colleagues who I really look up to and appreciate stand for either. So I just want to address that up front. There is nothing wrong wrong with you trying to do something physically to your body that involves surgery if you're not able to achieve that with a meal plan and exercise routine. Okay, let's start with weight loss or diets. Now, I don't like the word diet. I feel like diet has become a term that signifies you're going to do something very dramatic and different for a specific amount of time. And then when you achieve your goal, i.e. body image, then what? You're going to go back to eating Twinkies and eating unhealthy and not working out? So for that reason, I really like like the word meal plan instead of diet. But I'm going to go through some of the bad diets that we've all heard about. We're going to kind of discuss meal plan versus diet, and then we'll also get into plastic surgery. Now, when I talk about diet, I mean a structured approach that aims at creating a calorie deficit so that you can then lose weight and achieve the goals that you desire. This kind of a diet or meal plan promotes a healthy lifestyle. So for many, many years, dating way back to when I was a young boy, a lot of the diets I'm going to talk about, we've all heard of. We've all heard about paleo. We all heard about the keto diet, the Atkins diet, and then there's being vegan. There's the carnivore diet and so many other quote what I call fad diets. What I consider to be a fad diet is something that someone's going to do temporarily to obtain some type of a result that is not sustainable long term to allow them to live the healthiest lifestyle possible. Now, even though they are fad diets, they all are aimed at doing one thing, focusing on nutrient rich food and cutting back on calories, which I like to call a calorie deficit. Now, there's a big difference between a calorie deficit and starvation. When we cut calories too much, the body goes into crisis mode. And so whatever you give it, it will hold on to and potentially store that as fat, making it really hard for you to lose weight. With a calorie deficit, we give the body slightly less calories than it needs every day, but we can still have energy and do all the activities of daily living. And at the same time, burn enough calories slowly over the course of weeks and months that we gradually start to shed those unwanted pounds over time. I realize that everybody is different. And for some people, a paleo type of a meal plan works better for them. For some people, a keto meal plan, higher fat, lower carbs, lower protein works great for them. And for another person, maybe a carnivore diet that's more focused on meat with less carbohydrates and fats works better for them. One of the biggest pros of adopting a meal plan is its sustainability. If you you can pick the right plan that's not uncomfortable for you, creates a calorie deficit, and it's something you can do day in and day out, great. You will have created an incredible lifestyle that is sustainable, that you're happy with, and so you can live the healthiest lifestyle possible. Another great benefit is by being able to adopt a really healthy meal plan that will not only lead you to losing weight, but it also will reduce cholesterol, which can in turn cure heart disease, and it also allows us to get insulin stability, which also makes it so so much more easy for us to continue losing weight or to maintain where we are. This brings me to another set of great benefits for adopting a healthy meal plan. Not only does it help with your physical appearance that you're trying to achieve, but it also helps with your mental stability. And you will notice that you are just in general in a better mood. Who wouldn't want those things? A common stress that I see where people might fail and just 
try to have plastic surgery is that it is very time consuming to adopt a good lifestyle of eating well and exercising because those results don't just take days or weeks. Generally, it takes months to years to achieve the body you want to be in. Example right here. Let me tell you my story. When I got out of my plastic surgery training, I was 200 pounds. For me, I considered myself obese. I didn't feel good in my body. My joints were achy. I just in general felt gross. I myself tried some of these unsustainable fad diets that just didn't work for me. Ultimately, what worked amazing for me was Weight Watchers. The reason Weight Watchers worked for me was because essentially I counted calories. What does that sound like? Oh yeah, a calorie deficit. Weight Watchers helped me portion out all of my foods. I wasn't eating anything specific like a higher fat, higher protein, lower carb meal plan. I was mixing all of them together, but because I was counting my calories, I was essentially creating a calorie deficit. Now I will tell you, I personally believe that most people should count calories for a certain portion of their life, but not long term. I did a macronutrient plan for years and years and years because after doing that for a sustainable amount of time, I have just grown to know what I can take in in a day to still maintain where I am. But I will always believe if you don't track it, you'll never know. If you do track it, it will improve. So I encourage all of my patients who aren't exactly ready for surgery that still might need to lose some weight to start to count their macronutrients for a temporary amount of time until they get a feel and kind of a flow in their own body of what works for them. I just think it's very important for people to realize that if you do start a meal plan or quote one of those fad diets like paleo or keto, that you are not going to lose a large amount of weight in a short amount of time. In fact, it's not healthy to do that. We typically like to see patients losing about one to two pounds a week. And I will tell you, when I went through my journey on my own, it took me a solid two to three months before I really started to see the physical change that I desired. So just remember, you have got to stick with the meal plan that works for you. If you can stay consistent, you will lose weight over time. You didn't wander into gaining weight and you're certainly not going to wander out of it. It takes great discipline and patience. Also remember, dieting or a meal plan isn't all about just changing the types or the quantities of food that you eat, but it's more so about changing the relationship that you have with food. Look, guilty, many guilty pleasures, sweets, hamburgers, cheese. I, I like all of that stuff, but I've learned to realize that unless you control and have a better relationship with how often you indulge in some of those types of foods, it's really hard to maintain the physical and mental health that you desire. And again, I understand this is not a one size fits all type of a thing. You have to find what's right for you and what works for you. I know many people who do amazingly on a ketogenic diet, high fat and low protein and low carbs, and they get wonderful results and they're able to sustain that long term. Personally, I would do horrible on a meal plan like that. I'm actually one of the lucky ones that I can eat a lot of carbs and I do eat a lot of carbs because I love carbs, but I also eat high protein and a little bit more moderate fat. I've just learned over 10 years of tinkering around with my meal plan and my exercise routine that that's what works best for me. So that's what you need to figure out for yourself. But I can tell you it did not happen overnight. It probably wasn't until about maybe two or three years ago of doing this for the past 10 years that I finally looked in the mirror and said to myself, I am legitimately happy in the body that I am living in. I feel good. I look the way I want to look. I'm able to eat and indulge in certain foods on a regular basis that don't affect the way that I look or feel. And so it's taken me a long time to get there. And listen, I had many slip ups along the way where I yo-yoed and I gained weight back. Then I lost weight. Then I gained weight again. So I'm just like you guys. We all struggle with finding that balance. But at some point, if you stay consistent, you'll figure it out. We hear a lot of people talk about having cheat days or what is their cheat day and I actually see The Rock post about this a lot and I have to tell you I am not a fan of cheat days or the word cheat in every other aspect of our lives the word cheat has a negative connotation so why using the word cheat with your meal plan does that all of a sudden allow you to binge and indulge in some type of a food that we wouldn't ordinarily eat I also used to do the cheat day thing but I changed my entire tune after I talked to someone about this and it made total sense I would encourage encourage you to get rid of the quote cheat day and just work some of those foods into your daily life so that you can still maintain the results that you're getting.
getting, but not feel like you have to like dedicate a day or dedicate a meal where you can just overindulge and blast yourself with so many calories that you just set yourself back. It just makes no sense to me. So eliminate the cheat day and add those types of foods to your weekly routine within reason. So now let's talk about plastic surgery. When is it right for you? Is it even right for you? And when should you think about doing it? Procedures range all over the place from facial procedures to chest procedures to liposuction, tummy tuck, and other body procedures. Many of these procedures can reshape and contour specific areas of the body to give you the look that you're trying to achieve. Now, it's very enticing to not do the meal plan and exercise thing because that takes too long and that's too painful and just jump right into going to see a surgeon to have a specific procedure. But is that really doing the best thing for you? Plastic surgery also gives you the option for very targeted treatments on trouble areas. I mean, let's face it. Everyone has a trouble area that they just know no matter how lean they get, no matter how many weights they lift, no matter how hardcore they create a calorie deficit and dial things in, they just can't change that one area that drives them crazy. And I'm one of them. I consider myself to be super healthy and super fit, but I always had extra fat in the love handle area and it drove me crazy. No matter how much I dialed in my meal plan and exercise routine, I always had fullness there that just drove me crazy. I call those trouble areas. I was the perfect candidate for liposuction. I was healthy and fit in a great mental space, but that was just something that bothered me. So guess what? I had my buddy liposuction them and I could not be any more happy that I did it. The reason I knew the time was right for me is because I had done everything I could possibly do shy of having the procedure to obtain those results. I have zero regrets. I am happy that I did it. I'm two years out of that. And so I really do demonstrate the perfect candidate for something like that. One of the biggest cons to having plastic surgery is clearly the cost. Not everyone can afford to have a lot of these procedures. From the surgeon's standpoint, it takes a lot of time and money to do it. We have to pay the facility. We have to pay the anesthesiologist. And of course, there's our time for doing the work. Let's face it. We also have to pay our employees and run our businesses. There are always going to be surgeons that abuse the price point, but most of us try to just stay competitive, middle of the road, and get compensated for the work that we do. That said, the cost can add up fast when you're doing multiple procedures, and that in and of itself deters a lot of people. One thing I do tell patients is, go get the consult, go pick your surgeon, get the exact right person for you, get the price point, see what it costs, and then just start saving. And once you've saved up enough money, Money, you go have your procedure. That way you don't break your budget. You don't put yourself into debt. You save up the money and you do it when the time is right because this is elective surgery. It is not emergency surgery. It's the same thing I'm going to tell my kid when they want to go buy a car. Save up the money, do the work, put it aside, manage your funds, and then you can go get what you want. You can have whatever you want. You just have to plan. Another thing you have to think about is the risk of surgery as well as the time commitment for healing. Every surgery has its risks. Even the best of surgeons will have surgical complications. So there are risks involved. That said, if you choose a surgeon that you trust who does the proper workup and risk stratifies you for surgery, you should do fine. In fact, almost everyone goes through with these procedures and does not have a problem. Sure, we hear about the complications that occur. Some of those are with non-board certified docs. Some of them are board certified docs. Again, anyone can have a complication and clearly you also need to be diligent about who you choose for surgery. And many times it's out of the surgeon's control. Things just happen. But on the other side, plastic surgery can be a fantastic option for the right person. But clearly it is never a substitute for a great lifestyle. You have to have a good meal plan and you have to have an exercise routine. And the reason that's important is because if you're going to go have a procedure, like let's just choose the tummy tuck, for example. If I see a patient in the office and they look like they're not ready to obtain the best result possible because maybe they're carrying a little extra internal fat, the visceral fat that lives around our organs that causes that bulging and roundness to the belly. Well, in a patient like that for a tummy tuck, Part of the procedure is to fix the rectus diastasis to tighten up the muscles to flatten out the tummy. Well, if you have fat internally that's pushing out on the abdominal wall, it is nearly impossible for me to tighten up those muscles enough to make you flat. So if I identify one of those patients in the office, I might tell them, listen, now is not the right time for you to have this procedure. It doesn't mean no, and we want you to get the best result possible, especially if you're one of those people who have saved up your money to have the procedure. Here is another huge reason I 
I tell people they need to maximize their meal plan and exercise routine before they decide to have plastic surgery. If you want to maintain the beautiful results that your surgeon gives you, you have got to have all of the lifestyle and exercise routine things and the eating well things in place before surgery so that after surgery, you continue doing those things, those great habits that you've developed so that you can maintain the results forever. I cannot tell you how many trainers that I have talked to who are trying to work people through losing weight and getting their body in the best position to have a great result that just bailed because they couldn't take it anymore. The time commitment was too much and they just went and had surgery and then a year later they rebounded, gained the weight, came back to their trainer and that was all for naught. So it is crucial that you make sure that you have done everything possible to obtain the best body possible before you even consider having plastic surgery. I tell patients and consults all the time, plastic surgery should be your last resort. So how do you decide which procedure or when plastic surgery is right for you? Well, first you should purchase the book that I wrote called The Real Beauty Bible. I outline in that book all of the things that I think you should be thinking about before you have surgery to choosing which procedure is right for you. And then I kind of move into the third part of the book where we discuss living in your new body. So here are a few tips. First and foremost, consult with a professional. I cannot stress how important it is for you to choose a board certified plastic surgeon. I literally know emergency room doctors who set up shop in town and start doing liposuction in their office. By the same token, I know family practice physicians who are doing breast augmentations and tummy tucks. Yes, this stuff really happens. Why? Because the consumer is not educated about what board certification means. Now, does that mean that because a board certified plastic surgeon has their degree that they're good surgeons? No, it doesn't. So it's your job to get out there into the community, talk to people who've had surgery by some of these doctors, check out these people at the board. You can go to the website and you can determine whether they are board certified in plastic surgery or not. There is so much information available to you today that you should be able to get everything you need to make the right choice. Deciding between a weight loss meal plan and plastic surgery or integrating both comes down to your personal goals, your health, and what you're realistically able to commit to. Before we go, I want to give you one really good tip. I have countless patients come into my office and tell me they have done everything they can do to lose weight. They work out, they exercise, they've done it all. The fact of the matter is, as I question them, most of them have not even come close to dialing in the correct caloric intake to create the right calorie deficit and or they're unable to really figure out what foods are better for them versus others. This can be the hardest part of your journey. I understand that people get really frustrated when they believe that they are working out and eating well and it's just not happening. I highly encourage you to find a really good nutritionist or a macronutrient coach who knows you, who understands you and can help you build that meal plan because learning what the right calorie deficit is for you can be very difficult when you don't know what you're doing. That said, you have to look yourself in the mirror every day. You know if you've been cheating. When you come and you say that you've tried everything and it's not working, you know if you've been nibbling on chips and things like that, you know when you've been doing things that are off the plan. We all do it. The most important thing is if you do have an off day and you maybe do eat some of the foods that you know that you shouldn't eat, don't let that tail spin you into eating crappy every day and beating yourself up that you failed. It is far more important to accept failure and get right back on the horse the next day. But if you don't have a professional who knows how to help you monitor your caloric intake and to create a calorie deficit, it's not going to happen. Now, of course, a dietitian can tailor a meal plan to your needs and a plastic surgeon can and outline the procedures that might be best for you when it's right. Remember, each body is unique and a personalized curtailed plan is different for everybody. Whether it's changing your diet, undergoing surgery, or both, the decision should always be about enhancing your well-being and your confidence. Make sure to weigh all the factors carefully and choose what's best for your body and your health. Thanks for tuning in, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or schedule a consultation with me or one of your local professionals. Until next time, stay healthy and stay happy.